Solve the following equations by factoring. I start with um, case A. x plus 2 squared is equal to 9. I note that instead of 9, I can write 3 to the power of 2. Therefore, the equation is x plus 2 squared is equal to 3 squared. This is um, of this pattern. a squared is equal to b squared. Anytime you have this pattern, you can do the following. Bring 3 squared to the other side of the equation. You would get x plus 2 squared minus 3 squared is equal to 0. Now use the identity a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b to factor what is on the left hand side of this equation. You would get x plus 2 minus 3 times x plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 0. We can simplify the factors to get x minus 1 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. Now the product of two numbers, or let's say two factors, x minus 1 and x plus 5, has become 0. The only possibility is that at least one of these factors is 0. Either x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0. If x minus 1 is 0, then x is equal to 1. And if x plus 5 is 0, then x is minus 5. The final answer is, therefore, either x is 1 or x is minus 5. Now, let's have a look at what actually happened in the solution. We started with a quadratic equation. And we reduced the quadratic equation into two linear equations. 1 and 2. And we solved the linear equations to get the roots of the original equations. Now let's look at the second case, b. 6x squared minus 13x plus 6 is equal to 0. To factor the quadratic expression on the left hand side, I need to find two numbers that if I add them, I get minus 13 and if I multiply them, I get 6 times 6, which um, is the coefficient of x squared times the coefficient um, of x to the power of 0. And that is 36. By the methods we explained in previous weeks, we know that these two numbers must be minus 4 and minus 9. Let's verify. Minus 4 plus minus 9 is minus 13. That's correct. And minus 4 times minus 9 is 36. And that would be correct. Minus 4 and minus, one, minus 9 satisfy both equations. Now we can use this information to factor the left-hand side of this equation. We will write, instead of minus 13x, minus 9x minus 4x plus 6 is equal to 0. Instead of minus 13x, I wrote minus 9x minus 4x based on these two numbers. Now, from the first two expressions, the first two terms, I can factor 3x, and I'd be left with 2x 
minus 3. From the second two terms, I can factor a minus 2, and I'd be left with 2x minus 3. And this expression is equal to 0. Now we have two terms, and each term has the factor of 2x minus 3 in it. I can factor this factor, and I'd be left with 3x minus 2 equal to 0. In other words, 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Once again, the product of two factors has become 0. At least one of these factors must be 0. Either 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, or 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. If 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, x would be 3 by 2. And if 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, then x is 2 by 3. The final answer to the question is either x is equal to 3 over 2 or x is equal to 2 by 3. Now let's have a look at case C. 10x squared minus 17x plus 3 is equal to 0. To factor the expression on the left hand side, I need to find two numbers that if I add them, I would get the coefficient of x, which is minus 17. And if I multiply them, I'd get the product of the coefficients of x squared and x to the power of 0. And that's 3. In other words, the product should become 30. Using the methods explained in previous weeks, we can guess that the two numbers are minus 2 and minus 15. Let's try them and see if they satisfy both of the conditions. Minus 2 plus minus 15 is equal to minus 17, and minus 2 times minus 15 is equal to 30. Both conditions are satisfied. I'll use these two numbers to rewrite minus 17x as minus 2x minus 15x and I have a plus 3 in the original equation. Now, from the first two terms, I can factor a 2x, and I'll be left with 5x minus 1. From the second two terms, I can factor a minus 3, and I'll be left with 5x minus 1. And this expression is equal to 0. Now, I have two terms on the left-hand side. The common factor is 5x minus 1. If we factor this, we would get 2x minus 3, and the product is equal to 0. Now again, either 5x minus 1 is equal to 0, or 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. As we, we see, our quadratic equation has reduced to two linear equations, and we know how to solve these linear equations. If 5x minus 1 is 0, then x is equal to 1 over 5. If 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, then x is equal to 3 by 2. The final answer to part C is that either x is equal to 1 by 5 or x is equal to 3 by 2.